All right. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Jenny, and I'm currently finishing up my last semester at the NYU Game Center. So here are some of the games I've worked on. Morning Makeup Madness, which is a game about putting on your makeup in 10 seconds or less. Stellar Smooch, which is a game about loneliness and kissing in space. You can download it for free on the App Store right now. Be Glitched, which is a game about insecurity in computers and ourselves. It's still currently a work in progress and slated for release by the end of this summer. So that's some of the stuff I've worked on in the past couple of years. But uh, here's what I'm going to talk to you about today. So this is the game I'm currently working on now. It's called Consume Me, and I started it for my senior capstone project in the BFA program at NYU. It has evolved a lot, and I'm going to share with you the process I went through and how it gradually shifted from me telling my personal experience to showing it. Uh, Consume Me is a personal game about dieting and how that affected my relationship with food and my body. So when I was in high school, I was pretty unhappy with my weight. I decided to do something about it. So at first I incorporated healthy lifestyle changes like exercising more often and recording everything I ate. I'd write down the calorie counts for all of my meals every single day. And eventually, these exercise regimens and food restrictions turned into something pretty unhealthy and self-destructive. At my worst point, I eventually made up and imposed these very strict dieting rules upon myself. Constraints like record everything you eat, never eat more than 1,000 calories a day, never eat after 7 p.m., at least 30 minutes of exercise per day. I would punish myself with exercise if I overate or broke any of these rules. Know what that sounds like? A game, albeit one with dark consequences. So design-wise, Consume Me can be broken down into two parts. The core game, which is all about balancing food on your plate, and interstitials, which illustrate other aspects of dieting. You play as me, Jenny, and the goal is simple. Stay within your calorie budget. Undereat, and Jenny will feel hungry and lethargic later. Overeat, and she'll gain weight and feel unhappy about her body. However, you don't have all day to decide what to eat. There's a timer ticking, and once time runs out, you move on to eating. These three possible outcomes, undereating, overeating, and eating just enough, will decide the interstitials that follow after each meal. They will also determine whether or not Jenny succeeds at her diet as a result of her gaining or losing weight. So say if she overeats for lunch, she will go on and exercise after her meal because that's an important aspect to losing weight, right? Uh, so here she is doing bicycle crunches and squats and push-ups. Other interstitials capture moments where she is monitoring her body, which include actions like weighing herself, looking in the mirror, and pinching the flab from her stomach. So, uh, well, how did I get here? Arriving at this point was not an easy or straight path. Early prototypes revealed that I wasn't really getting my point across. Playtesters who didn't know the personal story behind Consumi told me that it would be a great educational game for young children to learn about nutrition and healthy eating. So I realized I needed to change my approach in order to successfully convey my message. Today, I want to share with you the development process I went through to get the game to the state it is currently in. My very first instinct was to create a, a direct simulation of my high school experience. I wanted players to do what I did, adhere to the same sort of dieting rules with the same kind of rigid constraints because that's what I believed would get this personal experience across. I sifted through old diary entries and blog posts about my obsession with weight loss and being skinny, and I also began creating mock-ups for my game. Here's an extremely early version of the meal scenario, which you'll see over and over again later on. I also began to think about the kind of structure that the game would follow. This is an early version where the player sticks to a schedule with events that take place at certain points throughout the day. I prototyped early versions of Consume Me in Twine, which is an open source tool for telling interactive, nonlinear stories, and I developed a simple game loop of what it would be like to go through that single day. 
Twine helped me start thinking about the vignettes that would capture particular moments in my experience, like step, stepping on the scale or having food organized out in front of a player, ones that would reappear in later prototypes. Around this time, I also began to experiment with the visual aesthetic of the game. I was taking a 3D animation class, so I focused heavily on creating 3D assets for this prototype. I explored the kinds of environments I wanted to situate the player in, despite not having a concrete idea of what I wanted the game to be. But I felt like it was worth experimenting with a first-person perspective to see if that would allow the player to embody my experience more thoroughly. With that in mind, I focused on the spaces that were important to my story, like my bedroom, the bathroom, and the kitchen. So this prototype helped me define the kind of aesthetic and visual sense that I was going for. Something playful, yet not too serious. However, I had yet to figure out what the core interaction of this game would be. So for the third prototype, I continued to work in 3D with the first person perspective, but began to prototype this core gameplay. Here's an updated version of the game loop with the main interactions I sketched out. As you can see, the meal arrangement scene is somewhat similar to the one I currently have in the game. I began to play with this idea of stacking food. The objective here is to squeeze as much food onto your plate without all of it rolling off. That seemed to be somewhat exciting and fun, but did not really align with the narrative of dieting, since usually dieting entails the player eating less, not more. I began to expand on this prototype with more detailed food assets, and I also prototyped some of the discrete measuring events, like pouring, but decided to scrap it since it was out of scope in terms of design and implementation. This prototype loosely captured what I wanted players to perform in my game. However, it brought forth a really big design challenge for me, that there was no clear objective, and as a result, no real sense of tension or risk that presented itself to the player. I wanted her to encounter the kind of frustration I was faced with when I was dieting, but it didn't really get across with this prototype. So the following semester, I decided to throw it all away and start again, this time in 2D. I knew I needed to focus on this core again because this was what was lacking in the previous iterations. I incorporated elements of rigidity and structure to the food pieces themselves as an attempt to present dieting as metaphor. My aim was to introduce a concrete goal for the player, fill the plate and stay under calorie budget. In order to succeed, they had to lose weight, and if they gained it, the game would respond as I did in real life. Jenny would feel sad and disappointed in herself for failing her diet. So before she begins her diet, her perception of food starts out as pretty normal. But as rules and constraints are introduced, the diet becomes more rigorous and obsessive. It seems like she is performing better, more in control of the food she eats and of her body, as evident in the meal scenarios themselves. I also began to spend type, time prototyping the vignettes and interstitials that gave players a better idea of the other aspects that took place in my life. They're important in helping articulate this experience more thoroughly and providing context for the player. So here are some early examples of exercising, eating, and chewing food. I also went back and iterated on the core loop again. This prototype is three days, and each day is broken down into three meals. These meals are punctuated with brief vignettes. Finally, the player ends each day with a weigh-in and a journal entry detailing Jenny's performance that day. <laughs> I mainly had issues with the core food puzzle, which is why I decided to iterate on it once again. I felt like the Tetris pieces were very abstract and failed to capture the kind of silliness or looseness that I wanted to convey through the design. And I also didn't think it was really compelling after a certain point of difficulty. However, it did help me form a very clear objective for the player, which gets my point across better than any of my other previous prototypes. I decided to return back to the idea of stacking food in order to literally balance your diet because I felt like it fit better with the overall design and visual sense of what I wanted Consumi to be. So what were the points that I learned along the way? Number one, don't be afraid to prototype. Prototyping fast and often really helped me think outside of the scope of my original design. It allowed me to experiment with many different ideas and forms of expression and kept the entire process interesting and fun for me. 
Don't take yourself too seriously and use humor to your advantage. Sometimes it's easier to get a point across when you aren't being too straight faced. In fact, silliness and playfulness can sometimes resonate more deeply than focusing on the very somber and depressing aspects of the actual experience. And finally, go for metaphor over direct simulation. For me, I shifted the focus from capturing the authenticity of my journal entries and diet plans to the frustration and defeat I felt when I was dieting. I would say that there are still some issues with the design, but I am a lot further along than I was a year ago. I'm super thankful to have had this opportunity to create this game, as well as the support of my professors and peers. I would not have arrived at this current state of the game if it were not for their input and feedback. Consumi is still currently in development, and if you're interested in keeping up with the game's progress, please check out the devlog at playconsume.me. Thank you so much.